Hello, this is Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, and we're here in Communic Asia 2013 in Singapore with David Gelman. He's the founder and CEO of Advantic Wireless. It's a Montreal-based, uh, Montreal-Canada-based uh, company, and uh, actually we've interviewed him uh, in this podcast a couple of years back and some of his staff as well, uh, and here to talk about the uh, new product launch of their Sapphire series of uh, GAN uh, equipment is uh, David. So, David, how's the show been going for you so far? Um, hi, uh, Virgil. Hi, uh, audience. Uh, show so far, it's uh, really great. It's, uh, uh, for us, it's 15 years we've participated in Communicasia, and every year we've seen better and better attendance, better and better uh, quality of uh, attendees who are asking uh, knowledgeable uh, questions and we're looking for specific answers. And this year, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, people from Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, and the uh, in, in entire region, in essence. Right, right. Now, you're launching at this show uh, your Sapphire series of GAN uh, equipment, right? Uh, yes, we, we launched uh, our Sapphire uh, series of uh, gallium nitride high-power ultra-linear uh, line of uh, solid-state power amplifiers and block-up converters. And we got uh, overwhelming success. We got yesterday uh, our um, seminar, uh, which was uh, attended. It was actually overbooked. And and people who attended, they um, got uh, insight of uh, a new disruptive technology what allows uh, operators of uh, DTH save a huge amount of money, both in uh, capital expenses and operational expenses. Uh, and also uh, reduce the amount of uh, transponders uh, for the same application and uh, uh, significantly, significantly, I mean like 70-80% uh, reduce total cost of ownership. Right. Well, for those of uh, our audience who's not familiar with uh, the gallium nitrite uh, technology, how does that work, uh, David? And how does, uh, we already mentioned some of the benefits, but... Uh. Uh, well, let it put it this way. Um, in my uh, lifetime, we will not see probably a better uh, or another disruptive technology like uh, gallium nitride mm-hmm. uh, solid state uh, technology. I, I'm in business of solid state amplifiers for uh, last uh, 30 years or 35 years. I remember when we started first uh, uh, high frequency gallium arsenide devices in, in the beginning of 80s. It was three watt devices. It was um, was at the time st- state of the art. In the last 30 years, gallium arsenide technology progressed, moved at high frequencies uh, beyond KA band, and, 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 and C band, for instance, uh, it's achieved maximum capacity of 60 watt, and in uh, KU band, 30 watt. Mm-hmm. In gallium nitride, we right away starting with double uh, amount of power, right. and it's higher density, it's, it's uh, more efficient, mm-hmm. it's higher MTBF, mm-hmm. It uh, can operate at high temperatures, so everything it's, it's uh, becoming in, in the right positive direction, making the entire unit smaller, faster, better, um, l- uh, more efficient, uh, less volume, uh, requires, requires less power consumption, and even less uh, heatsink. And on top of it, with all this coming high reliability. Right, right. Well, it's very interesting. Are you the only ones who are doing uh, gallium nitride, uh, David? <laughs> it's a good question. I don't think we're the only ones uh, mm-hmm. who are doing it, but we're the only ones who are doing very high power amplifiers. Mm-hmm. And the reason for it, uh, when, we st- when the first devices became available mm-hmm. seven years ago, six, seven years ago, mm-hmm. most of uh, industry insiders, who, uh, our uh, colleagues who work in uh, developing and producing uh, uh, solid state HPAs, they looked at devices and they said unusable because for uh, characteristic of uh, it looks actually non-linear, mm-hmm. but it looks very non-linear uh, when, when you don't know how to, to do linearity. Right. Our experience coming from building uh, over uh, 35,000 uh, high capacity links, uh, 64 QAM, and we knew how to, just by looking devices, how to linearize it, how to pre-distort it, and make it uh, very usable. So we, we went in this direction, we start learning how to use new devices, and uh, this time uh, technology became uh, um, evolved, became mature, 
uh, reliable. We, we needed to work directly with uh, um, device manufacturers who at the time themselves didn't know if we have good material or not because the rest of the industry didn't want to take and didn't want to work. Right. And in fact, some of uh, people, like even as far as a year two ago, mm -hmm. were writing articles about unusability and uh, immaturity of technology when we already, at the time, were selling thousands of units. Right. So we became uh, in, in a unique situation when we built a lot of these units. We have now proof, uh, track, field record of uh, three years plus of uh, utilization of technology, very reliable. We have almost uh, zero field returns. And when we do have returns, it's uh, we never saw uh, gallium nitride device failure. It's normally power supply right. or some other voltage regulator. So uh, some other failures which are normal to, to high component count devices. But uh, device, uh, gallium nitride devices themselves are so rugged, so reliable, what uh, none of them actually fail. Right. And reason for it, we can operate at higher temperature, higher MTBF, mm -hmm. higher breakdown voltage. We operate uh, one third uh, to one uh, fifth of breakdown voltage when with gallium arsenide devices, mm -hmm. we operate at half breakdown voltage. Right. So when you have uh, device driven to saturation, gallium arsenide, it can be damaged. Gallium nitride can be driven to deep compression and it would not be damaged. Right. Now you're using it for different applications, right? Broadcast, military? Uh, right. Uh, first people who really appreciated the uh, uh, value of, of uh, this technology, the military, mm -hmm. the size uh, and uh, weight uh, matters, especially for manpack and, and uh, flyaway applications. When we moved to broadcast, and, and broadcast, mm -hmm. we're experiencing right now second generation of DTH direct to home technology, what is actually uh, booming due to uh, introduction of two enabling technologies, DVBS2 mm -hmm. and MPEG4. Because of this, we, we got uh, uh, much uh, uh, higher availability of the bandwidth mm -hmm. for high definition TV. Right. And people want high definition TV today, of course. Right, right. And uh, uh, modern, or today's DTH can provide hundreds of thousands of uh, HDTV quality channels right. uh, powered by um, MPEG-4 and DVBS-2 high efficiency modulation but it's also neat because of high linearity requirements it's need higher power so traditional uh, approach of using uh, clustrons or, uh, or uh, TWTs uh, fell short it doesn't it doesn't deliver right. you have to put for each uh, uh, carrier mm -hmm. uh, its specific uh, uh, high power amplifier Plus, you need to put some redundancy. Right. What we offer in the DTH approach, it's solid state uh, uh, unit which do uh, extremely well fa uh, phase combining. We can, uh, with eight, uh, 500 watt KU band gun units, we can achieve easily two and a half kilowatt of uh, uh, transmit power. We can take, and it's relatively small assembly. Mm -hmm. We can mount it outdoor. Mm -hmm. We can mount it directly behind antenna, and we can save uh, multiple like three four db on antenna run just from shelter to antenna right plus we can save up to 12 13 db in uh, switching combining loss so in in essence we, we just uh, uh, eliminating all unnecessary uh, power uh, and uh, cost in, in in fact we just uh, installing system where we will uh, with uh, one system and one 13 meter antenna with two, two, two and a half kilowatt amplifiers, one for each polarization will eliminate 48 transponders of entire satellite. Nice. So to do the same thing, you need uh, around uh, 100 uh, uh, clusters or TWTs. Right. And you need uh, 90 uh, uh, 10 times more energy right. uh, consumption when we will achieve it uh, with uh, solid state technology. Right. And. Um, so we can, uh, uh, like I said, eliminate the single amplifier, full, uh, transpo uh, all transponders on the same polarization. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, we have back off, and uh, it's a soft failure. It's a maintenance-free performance. So if one unit out of eight fails, you maximum can have 1.2 dB reduction of power. Uh, but if link budget is properly uh, sized, it doesn't affect anything in uh, overall performance. It's uh, in service, uh, hot swappable units. Right. So uh, our uh, customers, we have 
like KDDI in Japan or um, GVT in, in Brazil, mm -hmm. cooperating with for several years, we have maintenance free operation. Now, KE Band is also coming into Asia, and I understand you also have a line of products in the KE Band space. Uh, yeah. Yes, we do. We have both in terms of transmission equipment mm -hmm. using, uh, this is actually still gallium arsenide HM technology, mm -hmm. and gallium nitrate is going to be available within a year or two in, in this band as well. Right. And we have now a full uh, line of product for uh, um, highest throughput satellite. Millennium, mm -hmm. what can simultaneously support hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Right, right. And has this been uh, deployed already in some of the other regions where uh, KA band has been uh, launched? Yeah, we deploy in uh, 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 amplifiers based on the gallium arsenide technology. We mm -hmm. can do it up to 100 watt mm -hmm. uh, of operating power. And we can, uh, and we deploy it. Uh, uh, Millennium um, VSAT system It's based on our uh, open standard DVBRCS system. And uh, it's proven technology what we have for, for many years, for over uh, uh, 13 years in operation. In fact, we were first in broadband uh, wireless access. When we introduced two megabit uh, uh, terminals, uh, return link in 2000 uh, in uh, Astra uh, return channels through satellite, which later on became RCS. Right. Well, David, uh it's quite a lot of uh, products that uh, you are, you know, you've introduced or are introducing. So, any final thoughts, like uh, on the Asian market? Uh? Uh, well, Asian market is uh, it's an important market to us. It's one of the most performing uh, markets. In the last year, we experienced 38 percent of uh, growth in our business, mm -hmm. and it's uh, mostly due to uh, contribution from Asian and Latin American and Russian market. Right. Right. Well, there you have it. Uh, lots to look forward to and uh, for all the news and information on Advantic Wireless and all the other news in the global satellite industry, you always have www.satellitemarkets.com. Thank you.